making a basic hydrocal mother mold. We're going to make a hydrocal mother mold for this 7120 rubber brush on mold. This was uh, made with 7120 silicone, which is a platinum silicone. And we used our shim method illustrated on the shim technique DVD that we offer. So uh, if you aren't familiar with that technique, you'll need to check that out in order to get up to speed as to how we got to this point. But this is a, a very simple, basic process of creating a mother mold. And the first thing we're going to do is lay this over on its side, or on its back in this case, using some styrofoam so we don't deform the clay. Now on this mold, we've got a spot right there on the side of the head that will create an undercut. And in order to eliminate that undercut, we're going to fill it in with some water-based clay. Now this step, really, that should have been done in the mold making process, but I wanted to show this is a, a way around that if you've got some of those little problem areas later on that you missed in the mold making step that's a way around it. Now that's not a perfect way to handle it and this is a shortcut but if you get to this stage in the process and need to fix a problem like that that's an easy way around it. Now first thing we'll need to do is cut up some uh, reinforcement fiber and here we're going to use some fiberglass mat we peeled off into some thin sheets and we're just going to cut that up into small squares and we need to do several of those before we start out mixing our hydrocal. Now this is regular hydrocal white and you can get this from us or find a local supplier for it. This is a uh, just a, a very standard molding plaster but it's called white hydrocal. Now when you're mixing this up real important here to sift the hydrocal into a mixing bucket full of water. You don't want to put it in and start stirring immediately or otherwise you'll have the plaster catalyzing at different speeds. So you want to sift it in until the water stops absorbing the plaster. And just to give you an idea about how much water we started with for this particular piece, we started with about a quart of water. Now here you'll see the uh, the water is absorbing the plaster and that look right there is what we're going for that dry lake bed effect on top and we actually add a little bit more than we normally would for casting just because we want this to be a little bit thicker so it'll stay put where we want it to when we go to make our, our mother mold now the longer you let that plaster sit and soak up that water the better end result you'll have the less lumps you'll have here for the sake of time we're going to go ahead and mix this up but you can actually let it sit and absorb water for a good 10-15 minutes and you'll get a really nice smooth consistency that way now the first step we're going to spread out our plaster or our hydrocal and keep in mind I'm going to be using those terms interchangeably through this video uh, hydrocal white is just another type of plaster it's a much stronger grade but we're going to start out by putting down a layer of hydrocal all over the surface of our, our uh, mold here, our rubber mold. Now since this is 7120 silicone, we don't have to use any mold release. But if this was a urethane rubber mold, that glossy final surface on a brush on urethane mold sometimes really wants to grab onto the plaster. So if we were making that kind of mold, we'd definitely want to apply some paste wax first or a spray of mold release to ensure that the uh, plaster didn't grab on to the rubber underneath. Now once we've laid down about a quarter inch layer of plaster, we're going to go back in and lay down our reinforcement fiber. Now you can do this with burlap. Here we're using a fiberglass mat. Fiberglass mat is just a little bit stronger than burlap and it makes for a thinner mold. We want this mold to be thin and lightweight so it's not heavy and difficult to wield around in the shop. Now we're just going to tear these sections up and lay them at different angles so we get good overlapping between our reinforcement fibers and we make sure we get total coverage all the way out to the edge and sometimes tearing them in half will allow them to lay out better across some of those compound curves. Now you want to move fast here because your total working time with uh, hydrocal like this when it's hand mixed is going to be about 15 minutes. So and keep in mind that's more if you get a little bit more working time the less it's mixed the more you stir it the less working time you have now as soon as I get that reinforcement layer laid down I'm gonna take the remaining hydrocal and lay that out over the entire surface of the mold and that'll keep it from uh, having any reinforcement fiber sticking through to the surface and we want a smooth outside surface because if we're gonna be handling this mold a lot it, say if we're slosh casting a wax 
or resin copy. We don't want little fibers cutting our hands or uh, creating problems with the mold strap later on. Now once we've applied the remainder of the plaster all over the surface here, we want to make sure we got a good even coat and again make sure we, we don't go over that edge. We want to continually run our hand around that edge to make sure that that uh, edge of the rubber mold is exposed because when we flip this over to do the other side we don't want to create a lock to that other side of the mold. Now you'll notice the plaster is a lot thicker at this stage than it was at the beginning. Hydrocal has a nice uh, property to it. It goes through a uh, stage where it's very runny at the beginning of its working time and then it gradually thickens up to where at the end of its pot life it's a very thick trowelable material and that works out perfect when you're building up a mold like this as it starts to hit that trowelable stage that's where you can start working it with your hands more and smoothing it out. Now an important side note here, you've got to stay on this and continually work it with your hands. You don't want to leave it alone and uh, let it cure up and get hard or it'll be almost unworkable if you try to come back to it that way. Now here I'm cleaning my hands in a bucket of clean water. You never want to wash this stuff down the sink or you will have some major plumbing bills. Just keep a, a bucket of clean water handy to wash your hands out and then pour that out in your yard later or let it dry out and throw it in the trash but do not use your sink. Now the first thing I'm going to do to work on smoothing this down is just using my fingers to work out some of those little uh, uh, peaks and uh, ridges and things from laying that down initially. And then as it gets to that trowelable stage I can use my whole hand there to work it out smooth. Now at this stage it's reached a putty consistency so I grabbed a little bit left over in the bucket and used that to thicken up that edge down at the bottom of the mother mold. And uh, that's where we're going to be pouring into the mold. I want to make sure that's good and strong so it doesn't chip as it's being handled. Now that's about the last little bit I'm going to be able to add and then I've got to just focus on smoothing out the mold. And once we get rid of the major lines and grooves and uh, from our application process. We want to just continually work that with our hands to smooth it out as nice as we can. And again, it, a lot of this is a cosmetic step, but the smoother your mold is, the easier it'll be to handle and the less issues you'll have with it snagging on other molds or your hands or mold straps. So it's a good idea to make a nice pretty mold anytime you can. And another note here is when you're smoothing it out like this you don't want to use water from your bucket of water there to uh, add to it to smooth it out. That's a, a way to kind of cheat there and smooth it out with that water but if you add too much water to the surface to smooth it you'll actually wind up with a very weak outside surface to your mold which will chip and crack over time. So you want to try to do, just use your hands as much as possible to smooth that out. Now your hands will only do so much to smooth it so once we get all the the major areas smoothed out by hand you'll notice that the surface starts to mat over and lose its shine and that's that's when we know it's just about set up and at, at that stage once it mats over it starts to get warm to the touch and at this stage is when we can really start polishing up the piece with some hemp so we're gonna make a little bird's nest out of a ball of hemp and again, this is an optional step. Some, some of you may not be able to get hemp. It's a difficult uh, fiber to find. Uh, we do sell it here in our shop, but for those of you who can't have this ship for whatever reason, um, you could use some uh, piece of burlap also would work for this. But hemp is ideal. You can take it and work over that surface and just continually polish that surface as it sets. And the harder the plaster gets, the better surface finish you'll, you'll get as you work it over and you'll find that you can actually put a little bit of a gloss on the surface working it this way and really get a very nice finish. And again, we're, we're doing this for several reasons. One thing is we want to make sure our mold isn't too thick. By keeping the mold smooth and following the contours of the rubber mold underneath, we ensure that we have just enough thickness to have a good strong mold, but not anymore because we don't want a heavy mold that will be difficult to maneuver around in the casting stage. Now we also want it as smooth as possible because we don't want anything catching on this. And then also we don't want anything dripping out of the mold when we're casting and sticking to the mold and be able to grab onto any rough spots. Now the final stage I'm going to do here is apply some molding wax to the outside. And just a light layer of that molding wax all over the outside will uh, just give it a nice 
finishing touch there and ensure that when you're casting, if something spills out of the mold, it'll be a lot easier to scrape and clean off the outside of the mold. Now we're going to let that dry a little bit and wipe off any excess. And there's the first finished section of our mold. Now the second half of the mold is going to go in much the same way. Uh, so it's a good idea just to study this process a few times and, and keep in mind when you're working on a mold like this or working with this process, it's going to take you a little bit of work to get the hang of how the, the cure cycle of the hydrocal works. And just be prepared for that. There, there is a learning curve involved in this and, and it does take some practice getting used to the feel of the plaster at different stages there. Now the first thing we do when we flip it over is remove any of that plaster that went around that edge. As our plaster thickened, it has a tendency to kind of hang there on the edge, so we just want to remove all that before we start. And another purpose with that wax coat on the first half is we can ensure that any little drips from the second half don't cause a bond where we actually wind up bonding those two sides together. Now we're going to skip ahead here. We've already laid down our first layer of hydrocal our layer of reinforcement fabric, and we've also uh, finished putting on the remainder of the plaster to finish out our mold. And overall, these molds are about an inch thick, and we want it to follow the contours as close as we can because, again, we want to minimize the weight there. And here we're skipping ahead to the polishing stage and just working that out and making that as smooth as possible. Now since this is my last piece of this mold, this is just a, a two-piece mold, and this particular piece, uh, this artist only had this one piece, uh, this standing figure here. So what we want to do is make sure we label it. While the plaster is still soft, we can use a stylus tool and actually scrape the name of the piece into the mold. And once we've done that, we can go back over where we scrape that into the surface with a Sharpie or other permanent marker there and trace over where we scored that into the mold and that'll ensure that we have a, a nice easy to read name on the mold. When it's in your mold library it'll be very easy to find because it's both written on there with marker and in relief. And then I also like to label it one of one and since so we know when we're looking for molds we know how many pieces are in this particular sculpture. And in this case it's just this one. And now we're ready to put on a final coat of mold wax and wipe off any excess and our mold is ready to open. Now keep in mind that uh, if you're starting out making hydrocal mother molds or working any kind of plaster by hand like this, it looks very simple when you see it done this way, but there's a lot of learning in the just the stages that the plaster goes through and how to work those stages to your advantage. So make sure you watch this video a few times and be prepared to play with the plaster and get used to that, that cure cycle before you attempt a large scale project. Now here we're ready to open up our mold and we just scraped off any excess that went across the uh, two sides there and we're ready to pull that open. And if all went well, it should come right off. And there's the clay left behind from our undercut. We can carefully remove that. And now we're just ready to clean up the two sides of the mold with a rasp, and it's ready to cast. Now what I use is just a straight uh, wood rasp that you can find at most hardware stores to uh, clean up the mold. It's really best to let the mold sit for a day before you clean it up with a rasp like this because it'll sand much better when it's harder. And there you have it, the basic process of making a hydrocal mother mold. And this was over a rubber mold, a more specifically a silicone mold made with the shim technique shown in our DVD uh, shim technique for multi-piece rubber molds. So uh, for those of you unfamiliar with that, I would highly recommend it. Yes, it is my video, so I am biased there, but that's a great uh, reference for learning how to make molds using shims and a key technique like this. It's really good for figurative sculpture and large pieces that can't be clayed up like uh, smaller pieces sometimes can. And as always, remember all of these materials and DVDs are available on our web store.